Well, we've got the place to ourselves today. Going to be fishing off that point there. See the coast around here is absolutely stunning. A couple of guys on the rocks down there, a little bit more hardy than me. Got to know this area when you're, you're fishing on the rocks like that, especially as the tide's coming in like it is now. So a lot of places get backfilled. Ordinarily, it's places like that that you get the fish in. <coughs> Being daylight, they tend to stay in the air, the deeper water, which is why I've chosen this mark. Thought I'd have a nice, easy, leisurely mark to fish, so I don't need to move in or out with the tide. Hey, you all right? Anything today? Uh, just about to try. All right. Hopefully. <laughs> Cheers. The swell's a lot smaller than forecast. It was forecasting five foot swells. I don't know, probably about three or four foot. I think we'll try down here first of all. Oh, it's a lovely day. It's about two degrees. There's very little wind. Um, the tide's on its way in. It's a really small tide. But it's even still, I'll have to watch out for, for these waves coming up around the back. I've not been out for a long, long time. Well, not with a camera anyway, not for a couple of months, because first of all, my editing computer broke. I needed a new one, but I was busy working on my house, so I had no cash for that. And I freed up a little bit of money for my computer. Oop, you bugger. For the computer. I was planning on going out a few weeks ago for one of my first COD fishing sessions of the year and uh, I lost my camera, couldn't find it so and I've just, it's the end of November now and I've just treated myself to a new camera and I've freed up some time in the house so I'm not, so I've hopefully got no more excuses not to be fishing or making videos. Okay, I'm going to place my rod rest there so it's out the way of the swell on the left. And I've got a custom platform there. So here we go for the main title. I've got a uh, Any Fish Anywhere GBFS Pro, which is 14 foot and can cast up to uh, 200 grams, which is ideal for me because I like a seven ounce lead plus a, you know, a bait as well. So it's got plenty of poke. Um, I moved over from fishing multipliers because just found that fixed spools are easier in the dark and um, you don't get the cranking power but never had to fix a bird's nest but we're using a Shimano Ultegra XSB 10,000 size uh, but I've actually got a 6,000 size shallow um, braid spool on there luckily I kind of cast very far so it holds way more than enough um, this is Power Pro Super 8, so it's 8 strand braid. It's about the same diameter as 12 pound mono, but it's uh, it's around 55 pound breaking strain. Then I've got a Maasai uh, barrel swivel on there, which my rig just attaches to. Oh, look at this swell coming. Might get a little hairy as the tide comes up. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, braid straight through. Let's get a rig on. Go. Use my usual two hook pattern oster. So this is my rig. I've got the rotten bottom on there, which is eight, uh, 18 pound. I spin that around so it keeps it nice and neat. Hook that into the rotten bottom so when this hits the seabed, that disengages like that. And then I've got this weak link of line here. 
I lose more leads this way than you would with a pulley rig, but uh, I much prefer the bite detection of this rig. Now it's a 60 pound um, main line straight through, and that's coming from a clip up here. I've got two glass beads held in place with two little crimps and an 80 pound barrel swivel, stainless steel barrel swivel. And then at the bottom of that, I've got a uh, Gemini uh, splashdown, which are brilliant for uh, as bait clips, really. Basically, what happens is once that's held in place, that pushes this uh, when the lead hits the water, that pushes up like that and releases the hook, and it all flutters down nicely. Rig just clips on like that, and that's that there sitting there, ready. I'm a bit apprehensive about this fluoro, I've not really, I normally use uh, Amnesia, um, which is just a light mono. But I thought I'd try a thinner, thinnest trace, as a scratching rig, but I hope. Uh, let's hope some of these fish uh, worms are still alive. Yeah, they're alright. Oh, fat ones as well. Got my bait from a local tackle shop in North Shields, Billy's Fishing Tackle. If you're in the area or don't use them, go and check them out. Just like so. There we go. Good to go. Seven ounce gripper. Two three oh Sakuma Mantas. Uh, I've also got some new waders, which unfortunately I ordered the wrong pair because I don't have studs on the bottom. So I'm just skied my way down that little slope there, so it's pretty lucky that I come a cropper. I need to remember that I don't have as much grip as usual. I'm gonna kind of cast that that sort of direction, so if my rod rests there, I'm gonna cast sort of over there. I think there's a bit of a, a gap in all of the. Uh, all of the heavy ground that's around here. Well, I didn't go at an angle, but I went kind of straight. It's not very deep, I'm on the bottom already. Put that in the rest. Take up a little bit of slack. Oh, this reel is feeling rough. It's going to need a service, I think. I should start looking after my tackle more. So all I've done here is that I can feel that is the tension on my lead. So I'm just taking that tiny little bit of slack in. I don't want it to be tight because I'll pull my uh, lead or hooks into any cracks or rocks and it might jam in like a grappling hook so if we just take the tension off because it's braid you can see a, a tiny tiny little fish bite Had a good hit there, good rattle. Yeah, fish on! Woo. Just a little one, but a bean. Oh, I think it's come off. No, oh, no, it's on. It's very small. But fish is a fish. Ah, oh. wow! It's a see-through codlin. Oh, I've wrapped my fucking rig up properly here. How the hell? The little dudes like that. 
take a three over that deeply. He's got a little sand deal in his mouth. There we go. <laughs> a little sand eel and a tiny little codlin. It's just crapped in my hand. Well, there we go. First fish, 10 minutes in. Mint, I haven't blanked. Just a little one, but don't think he could have uh, bent my rod in the way that the first knock was so there must be more about hopefully i can get maybe four or five generations down the line let's right, stick another worm on that hey These are lively, these bad Let's reset the panel and through the top of all that mush, pull it nice and tight. We've got two proud hooks. Just give that a quick whip. I'm keeping that line taut on my rig there and it makes it way easier to uh, to whip them up Let's slide that in the Gemini splashdown. Sounds a good one. Got my uh, towel over the back of the camera because I forgot my cable for the microphone. <laughs> Incidentally, this is the camera that I lost. And I uh, just found it <laughs> this morning. Hopefully that just acts as a little windbreak. Try a little further to the right. Nowhere near as far. Feels like it's about six foot, seven foot deep there. You just feel the tension on my braid. It's almost like, I don't know, touch ledgering and coarse fishing, I guess. Yeah, that's about right. There's no slack. I just had a hit there, but I was busy farting around in my box. Oh. Right, so I had a knock. Nothing came of it. Turned out that my breakaway hadn't actually disengaged the hook. So, let's get this out. I'm going to try, try and get it at an angle rather than 90 degrees to the shoreline, but with my uh, amazing casting pro S, it's uh, proven pretty difficult.
Well, it's much deeper there. You can almost tell by the waves. The swell comes around there and you can see it picking up now. Uh, it doesn't increase in size, so the uh, bottoms either get steeper or stays the same depth. But then the swell disappears until it gets to the close to the shore. And that's a good indication that it's, uh, it's quite deep out there. In fact, I know it's deep because I've seen porpoise and dolphins swimming up far off the shore here. So, uh, why, this is why it's a good mark. And you can actually see the ripple on the water here. And that's, that's the incoming tide. Right, so this bait's been out for, what, 10 minutes? I normally like to leave my bait out for about 20 minutes. Yeah, if I don't have any, any nibbles then, then uh, I'll wind it in and put some fresh bait on. So the two previous casts, I cast pretty much straight out from me and now I've cast at 45 degree angle. The place where I've cast to at the minute is the place where I'd normally sit. But, um, the two previous casts I was getting hit straight away so going to put a few layers on because the temperature is dropping now that the uh, sun's going down and then don't have anything in that time and I'm going to wind in put a new bait on and uh, I'm going to cast back out to the, to the place where I cast on my first two casts and hopefully uh, I'll start getting some more bites again it's three o'clock so probably an hour before before darkness and uh, hopefully that's when the uh, the big fish will come out to play. Right well it's been 20 minutes now since I uh, cast out put all my nice warm layers on uh, ready for when it gets dark. Put it snapped at the hook. So I'm going to swap it over for some amnesia, which is a bit thicker, but it's a lot more, well, it's less brittle than fluoro. So I'll snip that off. Make sure the line, discarded lines in my box. Here's the uh, Amnesia here, 25 pounds. This is meant to be see-through, but it's more uh, more opaque than transparent. But with the color of the water, it doesn't really matter. Ah, this tide's definitely getting in. It's only about four foot away from my, uh, my base now. And last thing I want is a freak wave to come. They don't look big, but there's plenty of back to them. Right. Three worms. Smallest one on first. Ah. Slide that up. Now, normally I like to rub these in the sand because it helps you grip with them, but uh, obviously on the rock mark that's just not possible. Thanks matey. Oh, I just washed this coat as well.
See, I've put my rig over there, and that's just to help keep the line tight, so it makes it easier. I, I you know I keep saying this, but it's, uh, it does make it things so much easier. Right, I'm going to go straight out this time, out that way, because that's where I got the last indication. Oh no, too far to the right. Fish, there's the bottom. Right, now that's soaking, I'm just going to... Uh, Move my kit a little higher up here. These rocks are a bugger. There's not one place that's flat. Well, I was just trying to waterproof my camera there because my battery's died and uh, I had to take the side door off. I hope you caught that on camera, but I, I didn't catch it on the uh, on the rod. Whoa! Oh, a better hit. Oh, I missed it again. Oh man, I got to stop farting around with these cameras. I am rusty. That was a better hit, that as well. I mean, oops. Come on, dude, come back. See the porpoise right in on the shore. There they are, heading straight for us. Kind of there. There we go. It's good to see you, chaps, but uh, if you could leave some fish for me. Whoa, I've never seen them so close. Look at that. If you leave some fish for me, I'll be well happy. So I've had five casts now. Oh, bugger. Got her this time. Again, it's not a big one. But it's better than missing it. It's a good sign for when it does get dark. Oh, he's put, got a little heavier. Hey, there we go. Oh, might actually be smaller than the last one. Well, there we go. <laughs> Who says big baits catch big fish? The size of him. So I was just on my fifth cast. I was just saying how I wanted to concentrate and catch a fish because I missed three big hits. This wasn't the one I was after. Little fella taking on the three oh four uh, four big worms. Let's get him back. Absolutely stunning. I am one lucky fella. Uh, whoa! A fing cormorant just flew straight into my braid.
Nearly took my rod away there. Right, that's been out there for quite some time. It's had a cormorant fly in the line, I've had cameras breaking, mounts breaking, but not feeling confident in it, so uh, I'm gonna recast now. Oh. Don't know what that was. been caught in some weed I think what I'm gonna do as well is move this rod stand a bit because uh, I'm not liking walking near the edge to put me uh, rig back on so I'll stick that Tip light on. Look at that sunset. So glad I made the effort to come out. It would be a nightmare sitting in the house. Oh, not a nightmare. But sometimes the effort just seems too much for the travelling and everything else associated, but with a day like it and an evening like tonight I mean look I'm not catching big fish but at least there's enough to keep us entertained So it's, uh, it's been about 20 minutes since uh, that last bait went out and uh, it's been really slow well, for the past couple of casts. Yeah, I don't know whether the low, it's just the low high water it seems to be the way normally. Uh, so we baited it and uh, love it back out. Hopefully. hopefully once the tide starts flowing again, hopefully that will make the, uh, the fish a little bit more receptive to the bait. Doesn't even look like it, but that bait's been touched. Going to strip that off and put all new bait on. Hopefully some, uh, some more juices might bring a little fish or two along. Get a big bait out for a big fish. It's not the neatest looking, but it'll do. Well, the water's been splashing up on this side as well. It's got pretty close, like, a little bit nervous about it. Might just uh, cast this out and then move the, uh, the rod stand back. Got nowhere else to go, well up can't go up, so I have to go back. Oh, 
I missed it. You. Oh, that was a good bite, that. Oh, I can't believe I just missed it. Seems to be one of those days. But still used to get and bite. Oh, I'm gonna have to give it one more minute now, aren't I? It's gonna hold the rod. Right, well, that's that then. Yeah, so I'm gonna let a good go at that. It's been a cracking night, or afternoon and evening. Um, action all the way. Seen some porpoise feeding, that was cool. Uh, had an amazing sunset. The weather's been kind, and I haven't been swept off the rocks, so uh, it's a good one. But I hope you like the video, and uh, if you have, please give a thumbs up down below and subscribe and uh, tell your mates. I know it's been a big gap in videos, but I kind of explained that earlier, and I think the worst of it's behind us now, so. Uh, probably got a few more cod sessions coming up and then um, once Christmas has been then I'll uh, be hitting the rocks again for pollock and cod for, uh, using lures. Keep an eye out for those and also got um, a couple of bass videos coming out which I uh, filmed in the summer. Uh, one of them, no spoilers, it's going to be a two-part effort. One of the parts has got a new PB and I think it's close to a double so keep an eye out for that coming as well. All right nice one, thanks very much and tight lines. Mom. 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 Mom.